Now before I get into this, I want to actually say if you have a Canon ESR or any camera really that actually has a mini HDMI port, not a micro, you need to buy a normal HDMI cable to a mini HDMI cable. Because when I actually got this, the cable that they sent in the box was this one and it's a normal one to a micro HDMI. And I do suggest before you do end up picking one of these up, is that you actually check what a HDMI output your camera got. Make sure if you've got a Canon USR or camera with a mini HDMI uh, output source to buy a cable with it as well, otherwise it just won't work. Right, now I've actually had a little play around with this monitor. I must say I'm actually really impressed with it. I've not actually gone out and shot any videos of it or anything like that at the minute. I've only just literally looked through the menus and so far I'm actually really, really impressed. I haven't tried uploading any LUTs. However, there actually are built-in LUTs and I really do think this is an unbelievable deal if you can pick one up. Brand new, they're about £200. However, on Amazon, I bought mine for about £160, like new condition, on Amazon, and it was sold by the Free World store. It still had the protective cover on it and everything. For under £200, I really don't think you're going to get a better monitor than this. So before we get into anything about the actual, like I'm showing you inside, let's actually talk about what comes in the box and then what um, is on the outside. So on the outside, you've got HDMI in, you've got HDMI out, and you've got DC out, 8 voltage, you've got SD card reader at the bottom for loading in your as well and the really good thing about having LUTs on this thing so what you do you create your LUTs just say you've got 10 LUTs created you want to go for different obviously um, looks so one you might have like a sunset look you might have a more cinematic look here one might be like a blue tones one might be a green tones and basically what you do when you load up the LUTs here obviously if you're shooting in log on whatever camera you have got a Canon or a Sony or whatever obviously it's gonna come up it will show you exactly I think what it's gonna look like on here However, if you hover over like and press the LUT, what you want that you think. So if you already know what LUT you're going to be using in post, if you have that all planned out and you actually click on the LUT here, it will tell you exactly what it's going to look like in post on this monitor. And then again, you've got another power system DC in 12 voltage. You've got a tripod mount at the bottom. And you've got a headphone jack so you can really listen in to the actual audio when you actually are recording, whatever it is, an interview or a scene or whatever you want to do. And it's got DC in, a uh, 5 volt type C, so a USB type C port here as well. And then you've got a tripod mount here as well. So this is where you probably normally put the tripod mount, but it's up to you if you want it vertically or not. On the top, you've got your menu wheel, and then there's a scroll wheel as well. So that's actually how you can navigate through your settings and like turn up the volume or the backlight as well. And that menu button is actually the button you press to click on certain things if you're not using touchscreen because again this is mainly a touchscreen monitor as there's no physical buttons on the front whereas on the f5 v2 they all had physical buttons at the top to access like your different features on the monitor but this one is all touchscreen and obviously you've got this little dial button up here and then here is the touch on and off so if you press it once it'll go off so if you do accidentally press something on the screen like if you accidentally turn off something a setting or something that's when you turn it off so that don't happen and it's also the power button at the top now actually in the box what you get you get this hot shoe mount as well so obviously what you do with this bit here you just tighten that up onto the monitor here and then you put this on your camera or whatever place you want to put it on wherever your hot shoe is and that's actually how you can use it if you've got like a camera cage for example with the top handle or if you just want to use it without a camera cage and just put it straight onto the top handle of the actual camera that's obviously when you can actually look at it and have it directly on the camera and then on the side so you instead of putting your shotgun mic on the top because obviously this is going to be there instead you've actually got another mount here to put your microphone or whatever else you want to put on this cold shoe or actually on this thing here and then it also comes with like i mentioned earlier the hdmi to micro hdmi port and then you also got the sun visor thing you put this over the monitor and then this is where you can actually block out the sun because this uh, monitor actually is 500 nits brightness and apparently outside a thousand nits brightness is enough to actually see in direct sunlight and i think that's everything that actually comes with it so now i'm going to plug it into here and then i'm actually going to show you like obviously all the different menus and setups and what actually you get with the field world f6 plus so of course all you do is just plug it in through here and then you turn it on with the top button on the top it would help if I actually put the battery in to be honest all right and so this is what the monitor actually looks like turned on as you can actually see here on the top it's got obviously whatever my camera sees and at the minute I can't see what my camera sees at the minute on the monitor because I've actually put it to only the uh, monitor itself 
because this way, if you have it on both of them, you can't see all the settings on the monitor. You can only see the screen, which is obviously personal preference, but I would actually like to see everything on the monitor because when I'm using the monitor, I'm not really gonna be using the actual LCD panel that I'm actually using on the camera. Obviously at the top it says recording and then it's got all my settings at the bottom, everything that's gonna be on the camera. And then obviously when I click here, touch off, as you can see there, it says touch off. And then if I press the menu button, this is when everything comes up at the bottom. And obviously, cause it's touch screen, if I just press that, it says focus assist. Oh yeah, turn off, I, I forgot I turned the touch off, right. So focus assist on, and then basically what focus assist actually does is it tells you what's in focus. I think it's called focus peaking, but it's, this is focus, uh, focus assist. So it's basically telling me what's in focus. This yellow bar here is telling me what's in focus. So as obviously, because it's around my head at the minute, if I look at the camera, it's around my eye, and then that yellow around the box is telling me that's, that's what's in focus. If I change it to manual focus and change its focus in the background, then that's obviously, it's gonna, I think the pop figure at the background is gonna turn yellow to tell me that that's in focus. And then again, I can turn that off. And then you've got your histogram at the bottom here. You can turn it on and off from the menu button as well. So here's your histogram to tell me exactly what my exposure is like. And then you've got your audio meter on the left. So it's telling me what my audio is gonna be like. So it's not hitting the, uh, reds at the minute but then again I'm filming on this anyway so it don't really make a difference uh, and then again you've got the parade on and off this is your RGB tones as well and then you've got YUV I think this is another waveform that I'm not really too particular with that I don't really know about and then another one here that just says Y and then you've got all that all this information on the screen as well when you're actually exposing your image and then another one to turn that off you've got your vector so this is your vector sp scope, so it shows you all like the skin tones and everything and the colors and everything, what's actually more dominant in the frame. So obviously, because I've got blue and red in the frame, it's telling me there's a lot of blues and a lot of reds in this frame as well. And it says all waves. So now this is everything turned on. So the screen obviously goes smaller, probably the same size as my camera screen on here as well. Maybe it's a little bit bigger, but it's got the waveform at the bottom, it's got the histogram, it's got the audio meter, and it's got the vestoscope. So it's got absolutely everything here if I wanna check the all the exact exposure levels and everything. Now, when I actually got this, I thought that was it. However, if you hold the menu button down, it comes up with this screen here as well. Now, this is so many more settings. So this settings here is basically the same settings what you got on, uh, I just showed you then. However, at the bottom now, it's got zebra mode. So if you turn that on, it will tell me what's overexposed. So as you can see in the background, because my Aperture MC is on and obviously it's really, really bright, it's telling me that that part of the image is overexposed. However, obviously because I've exposed this scene correctly, that's the only thing uh, overexposed. So this zebra is really, really helpful, especially if you're outside to show you what's overexposed because then you can obviously adjust your settings to make it not, not overexposed. So this is a really good uh, feature to have. Most cameras do have this though, to be honest anyway, but it's still nice that this one actually does have it. You've got more at the bottom, uh, monochrome here, which I actually didn't see earlier. It goes gray, you can go red, green, blue. And I, don't, I don't really know what that's for, to be honest. And then here, false color. Now, false color at the bottom here, this is obviously another way to expose your image, but it's telling me what type of, like what image is overexposed. So if it's in the 100 IRE, that means it's really, really overexposed. And as you can see again, on the Aperture MC, it's got yellow, which is really high, 80 to 100 overexposed and then the red which is over 100 IRE which basically means that's overexposed and this is a really really good way to I think get your skin tones and everything perfectly exposed so as you can see all of this blue here is telling me that it's really uh, underexposed actually and it's because it's obviously I've got a black background but the middle of me here uh, my skin tones is in like the gray pinkish area and as you can see at the bottom i don't know if you can see that it's got 70 to 60 50 that's all like a gray area so that's kind of perfectly exposed when you start getting into the yellows and then the oranges that's when it's awarding to be really overexposed but really your skin tones is what you're going to want to be around that 70 to 50 level and that's what mine is at the minute so again this is another really really good way to actually check 
if your image is perfectly exposed or if you just need to dial down a bit. It all depends on what you're actually going for when you're actually shooting your scene. So false colors is another really good uh, way I'm gonna actually you get the most out of this monitor. And you go on the second one, and as you can see on the actual screen here, you've got the uh, rule of thirds box. Let me just change uh, the transparency quickly because you can do that that you can change the transparency so what you've got you can change it to like nine grid on and off so i'm obviously i'm going to keep that on because this really really helps for composing your image obviously if you want to get like a rule of third shot then i know exactly where i want my subject to be in this frame and the rule of thirds uh, nine box helps me do that and then you've also got it's annoying that it keeps going off you've also got safety marker uh Basically, this is if you want like to get a shot in this like, like 16 by nine. If you was going for a four by three shot and if you actually compose the image inside the four by three or the five by four, you know you need to get it inside that box to actually for it to be in the frame. And this is where a lot of people, this is where they actually use trying to get like a, the movie aspect ratio, like the anamorphic look. They put the animal, you can actually do that anamorphic look on here like this one here. 2.35 that is what cinema is like filmed in so you've obviously got the whole screen but if you want to make sure everything is in your frame and obviously for this aspect ratio you can see and make sure you can frame it within this so that's another really really good thing about this center marker i'm just going to go through these quite quickly marker mat another one like i said look it's only showing instead of showing the whole thing and that it now it's only showing uh, this aspect ratio so obviously the size of black so that's obviously if you want to film in that way. And then you can obviously change your color and everything. If you go down, this is scan mode, under scan. Don't really know what this is, to be honest. Uh, I'm just going to keep it on under scan. Video aspect, like I said, 16 by 9, auto, user, stretch, all of that, different uh, aspect ratios. Anamorphic mode, what I mentioned earlier. If you actually want to get that anamorphic mode composition in your image, this is where you can change it here. Look, so if you want to... 1.8, 1.6, 1.5, 1.33. This is where you actually get the actual aspect ratio for the anamorphic mode. And then you've got auto mirror on and off. Zoom times, you can actually like zoom in uh, to the image if you want. And I'm pretty sure you can pinch zoom on this as well, which is not doing right now, so maybe you can't do it. Freeze on and off, pixel to pixel, on or off. And then you've got another one here. This is where the LUTs come into it. So HDR, as you can see, it's actually changing what it looks like on screen. Look, I look different to what I'm actually gonna look, uh, what I was before. So this is what the camera's actually taking, log. And then this is where you can actually see what the actual final image is. However, I don't actually have my LUTs loaded in here yet. So I'm actually gonna be using here. So if I turn this on, look, it instantly changes and you can change to all these different LUTs. Now, obviously these are built-in LUTs. I don't know exactly how good they are, but if I just click on Earthy 7 for now, this is what the actual final image is going to look like when I actually click Earthy 7 on my final editing program. This is what it's going to look like with these exact exposure settings. So if I want actually this Earthy 7 look, then I look at this and if I feel like oh, I'm a little bit too bright or the background's a little bit too bright, I want to lower it. This is when I change my settings just to so you, uh, change the exposure. So obviously the LUT actually looks better to what you actually want. So this is a really good way to actually, if you're planned, exactly know what you want is to load up the LUT you want and then actually expose it for the LUT. So you actually get what you want. So you know you have the shot in camera rather than you might have messed up the exposure settings a little bit when you're actually filming and then you have to try and uh, save it in post. Here you can do it all now in camera. This is another really, really good thing about obviously the Feel World uh, F6 Plus uh, is obviously the LUT. So you've got loads of different ones. This is where you can change the color temperature. A lot of suddenly gone a lot warmer, cooler. So you can do all these different type of things in here as well. Backlight, brightness, contrast, saturation. And then at the bottom is settings and like transparency and everything, volume and firmware update and everything like that. So yeah, so that is, that's the Feel World F6 Plus. So I've gone through every single feature that you can actually have on this uh, monitor. And it's gonna be really, really good for obviously filmmaking because not just a bigger screen than that, you can do so many different things with exposure and then load in the LUTs up and everything. So you can get the exact perfect image in camera, not even in post. So 
yeah, this is what I actually think. I'm really excited to start using this. I actually do have a little job for a real estate agency on Friday. And on my DJI RSC2 gimbal, whenever I actually put it in portrait mode, so vertical mode, because I'm shooting a TikTok style video for them, when I've, I'm changing it on the RSC2, you move the tripod handle on the top, so you're holding it like this instead of like that. And obviously that way, because uh, it's vertical mode, I don't have the, the monitor out to the side. It's obviously in line with it up that way. So my hand actually blocks the screen and also, if I'm on a certain angle, if something gets in the way of the actual viewfinder, it goes completely black and I can't see anything what I'm doing. Even if it does go black or if it's not black and my hand's in the way, I can't see what I'm filming. So it's really, really hard to actually frame my image to actually get what I actually want. So this is another reason why I actually invested in this, to actually put on the side of my gimbal so I've got a bigger screen anyway than what I would normally be seeing and nothing is blocking it in the way. And then obviously because I can actually now see what I'm actually filming and I'm framing it properly with all these sick features on the actual Feel World F6 Plus itself, I can actually expose it perfectly if I want to obviously, uh, or if I load up some LUTs to actually color grade it perfectly to what I want and I can expose it for the LUT, what I'm actually going to use while I'm actually shooting the video. So really, really excited to use this. If I didn't have this, I would be panicking a little bit when actually filming this video, because obviously I won't be able to see what I'm doing. But now with this monitor to my side, nothing's blocking me. I've got a big, massive 5.5 uh, inch screen, I think this is as well. 500 nits, uh, so inside's fine. Outside, I might just have to quickly put the sun visor on it, which is absolutely fine. Is it the best? camera monitor under 200 pounds to be honest all the videos that i've actually looked online for i think it might be this might be the best valued monitor on there brand new 200 pounds is a little bit expensive obviously but i think it's going to be completely worth it it's half the price maybe even more than half the price of the atmos meninja which is obviously a recorder as well and if you are interested i will leave the link in the description below for you to go buy it from amazon like i said you could get the like new version which is really really good also uh, in the description there's a link to my koji profile which has got all my external links like tiktok my website so if you want to go check them out there and they've also got an actual a tip fund as well i call it a fund i don't really know what to call it just to support the channel so it can continue making me videos like this if there's any other gear reviews that you want me to check out yeah if you're interested you can always leave a tip i'm not forcing you to it's completely optional yeah that's the end of the video thank you very much for watching if you did find this helpful hit that like button and subscribe to see more videos like this in the future thank you very much for watching and i'll see you guys on the next one see you later